few plays in this game that that stand out to me in particular. I'll start with the Derek Harmon penalty. And I want to start there because this is a guy who has played a lot of college football, who has been incredibly good, incredibly disruptive. And I don't think there's a larger indication or any bigger takeaway other than this was perhaps the most pivotal play towards this game looking closer than it needed to. 38 to 9, heck of a number. Heck of a number. But really wasn't even that close. And I, it, it was a foolish play, but I think you could easily look at this and the Treshawn Holden incident, and Treshawn Holden was back on the field, though he's getting pushed for playing time by Justice Lowe, who I'm going to talk about in, in a moment, and say, well, like, is there is there a problem? Is there anything? I don't see it that way. I think he just got a little overzealous, went a little bit too far, not super, super worried about it, but it definitely stood out to me because Illinois ended this game with 293 yards of total offense, which is a great number uh, for, for Tosh Lupoi's defense. And, you know, Dan Lanning, Chris Hampton, of course, a part of that as well. Uh, Tony Tuioti, all the guys. But 293 yards is really good. What what percentage of that came on that singular drive? 70 yards? 70 yards? Like, however good you think this performance was for Oregon's defense, I I think it was a touch better. So that's the only reason that I wanted to start with that. But the second one, just as slow. I, I mean, Oregon's just got dudes at everywhere that you look. Nine different guys catch a pass. Let me make sure I get there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different players catch a pass in this game. Yeah, one of them was Jeremiah McClellan from Austin Nova said. <clears throat> I'm going to talk about that uh, in a moment as well. Five different players score a touchdown. Gabriel, and he threw the ball to Tez Johnson. He threw the ball to Justice Lowe. Noah Whittington got in on the action. Uh, you had Dylan Gabriel run for a touchdown. Like, Oregon has recruited incredibly well from the high school ranks in the portal over the last couple of years. And I think week over week, I, I'm thinking more and more about how those efforts are paying are paying off in real time. Because you don't just see Oregon have a couple of players. Like when you when you watch a team, take Colorado, for instance. Colorado's a good football team. I know not everyone likes hearing that, but as I've been talking about on Locked On College Football since the offseason, they address their weaknesses. They're a good football team. They're incredibly reliant on two guys, Shador Sanders and Travis Hunter. And those guys, pretty good dudes to be reliant on because they are exceptionally dynamic NFL caliber playmakers. What I love about this Oregon team is, yeah, they've got several NFL guys on the roster on both sides of the ball, but I never feel watching this team defensively or offensively like they are solely reliant on one or two guys. I feel like the depth of playmakers that Oregon has put on display this year is reflective of the talent they have recruited in the last couple of cycles and players they brought in from the transfer portal. But you can get an impact play from anywhere. Take the fourth and goal in the third quarter. Illinois goes down the field. They go for it. Who makes that pass deflection? Amarion Winston, who was doing everything in this game. He, he's going to be an individual shout-out, I can already tell you, on, on Monday's show when I get to that segment. And that's because he made a significant impact on this game in that one particular moment, elsewhere too. But when you can have the number of impact plays that Oregon gets from just a variety of players, I, I think this is what the result is. This is what it ends up looking like. And I think that it's a great thing to see. It's why the defensive line can be as good as they have been without Jordan Birch. It's why Treshawn Holden is, you know, essentially, I don't think they officially announced it, but was clearly suspended for the Purdue game. And you don't have a drop off in the passing game, even though it's your number three wide receiver. And you didn't have your number one tight end. Terrence Ferguson hasn't played the last couple of weeks. And Oregon's put up 35 and 38 points, and they they slow down significantly in the second half. I'll talk about that in, in the third segment. But I, I just think that, you know, an explosive play for a touchdown to, to Justice Lowe, the fourth and goal that really 
I, I think was a, a, a kind of flag planting moment for this Oregon defense of, hey, we're here. I mean, there was nobody open on the play anyway. Altmaier was trying to fit it into a tight window. There was no one there. They ran the Chiefs concept from the Super Bowl, what Andy Reid, I think, calls corn dog, motion the guy in, and then he zooms back out into the flat, and Oregon runs zone, so they're sitting there in the perfect coverage, and everybody else was was locked up on the nearest player, and then Altmaier had some pressure in his face, had to let it go, incomplete pass, boom, fourth down stop. So situationally, Oregon was good in this game. Illinois 0 for 3 on fourth down. There were 5 of 13 on, on third down in the football game. It's a good place to be. And I know that one drive where they scored a touchdown, they converted a bunch of third downs. Yeah, it's going to happen. Altmaier made some plays with his legs. He can make some good throws. He's got a couple of good receivers. But I love the way that this defense played situationally. And I just think the number of impact plays we see every week, it's just fluctuating around. It's it's this guy. It's that guy. I mean, Bryce Betcher had been quiet the last few weeks. Remember, he was the talk of the defense. He was the he was the story on that side of the ball. Did you know he plays baseball? And he he has been, I think, compared to the first few weeks, not much of an impact player. And all of a sudden, up oh, there he is making tackles and he picks up his first sack of the season. Like that that's what excites me about this Oregon team. Why I look at them and say, yeah, they can win the national championship this year because I watch a lot of college football every week. There are a lot of really good teams out there. I, I don't think there's anyone who I'd say Oregon is incapable of beating. There are plenty of teams capable of going toe-to-toe with Oregon who can beat them as well, but who's Oregon not able to beat on the field? Neutral site, home, away, like whatever. I, I just, I don't see that particular team. So, uh, I thought those moments really, really stood out to me as like, wow, th- this is going great. This is really good. And then at the end of the game, I just want now I, I, I made a similar comment on last year's show. So you never know a lot. Of, a lot of things can happen. But Austin Novosad gets in at the end of the game and Gary Danielson, one of the best analysts out there on on television, he um, he, he makes the point that the red shirting process allows a guy to play in four games plus postseason. But Austin Novosad came in because against Michigan State, when backups came into the game, it was Dante Moore. And so now it was Novosad's turn, and they're clearly intentionally protecting the red shirts of both those guys. Saw Dink Riggs, by the way. Freshman running back, boy. <laughs> that guy looked good. He looked phenomenal. Again, first time we'd seen him this year. We'd seen Jay Harris, but we hadn't seen Riggs yet. Boy, he looked really good. And Nova said, threw a first down on third and four to Jeremiah McClellan. Had one throw that was behind Treshawn Holden. If he leads him, it's probably a first down, but he threw it to Jeremiah McClellan. I just saw that and thought, hmm, Riggs in the backfield, Nova said a quarterback, McClellan at receiver. I don't know. I don't know. Just file that one away in the old memory banks. If you think I missed a standout play that you want me to talk about on the show on Monday, let me know. Drop your thoughts in the YouTube comments. Hit me up on X, formerly known as Twitter, or become a Locked On Ducks insider and get a free 14-day trial with the link in the description below. Then it's just $5 a month. You get priority mailbag access and all sorts of other perks too. So there were a lot of good things in this game, as I've discussed. It was not all great. I There was one moment in particular that <clears throat> didn't like it. That's coming up next.